The new iPad mini is finally here with the A17 Pro chip, the same as last year's iPhone 15 Pro and 15 Pro Max, and yeah, I ordered one. Now the question is, is this the iPad for you? I've got some thoughts, some recommendations, and yes, a bit of a rant because, you know, no one else will say it. I'm Alex, and I do down-to-earth tech videos. First of all, what's different? Here's a quick table for you to have a quick look and maybe screenshot it. While I have a little bit of a rant here, right? Just bear with me. Is it just me or Apple is getting lazy? Not just with the specs here, lots to talk about on that, but even with marketing of the iPad mini this year, it's very unlike them, right? They didn't even bother to create a new wallpaper for the iPad mini. It's a nice wallpaper, it was like three years. No, <laughs> come on, refresh things a little bit here. Also, will they just stop mentioning Apple bloody intelligence? Apple, you've lost a race, right? You're playing catch up, so just get it done, in my opinion anyway. Come up with something new. How about that, right? Like it used to. All right, I feel better now. I just had to let that out <laughs> off my chest. In all seriousness, the iPad mini has always had a special place in Apple's lineup. It's one of those products that always do well for them. It's actually surprising that it takes them so long to update it, but this time, it does have a couple, no more than that, of new tricks up its sleeve. Nothing crazy though, don't get too excited despite what Apple's like brown nosing channels will tell you here on YouTube. But these updates, even though quite small in my opinion, will actually make users, some existing iPad mini users, very happy as well as potential buyers like me or perhaps you. There are no new tricks when it comes to the design though, let's get that out of the way. It's still the very same sort of small, lightweight, ultra portable tablet that we've come to expect. Nothing changed on, on the outside of it, right? It's exactly the same casing and materials. But hey, even though I keep banging on about boring designs, you know, not just Apple, like lots of brands do the same thing over and over again. If it ain't broke, right? I'm kind of accepting now that that's the, that's the norm in the tech space, you know, not, nothing changes drastically from one model to another. The mini is great though, if you want an iPad that won't weigh down your bag or, you know, take up too much space on your desk, something that depending on your pocket, it might even fit in your pocket. In my iPad buying guide, actually, I recommended the iPad mini for a few different use cases. And I was actually really surprised to know how, you know, how many of you actually use the mini and, you know, for all sorts of different reasons as well that I never thought about. So it does feel like a very popular iPad, which is bizarre, right? Like I said, Apple took so long to update it considering how popular this device is. And yes, the iPad is perfect for those, you know, who like our tech very compact. As someone who has been a fan of the, the Galaxy Z Fold, I mean, this device does everything right now is doing my monitoring of this camera. I like the mini tablet aspect, right? It's, that vibe is real. I'm really sold on that. I'm not sure how much we can really compare the Fold with the mini iPad mini actually, but to me, it's the closest Android mini tablet, right? It's just a hell of a lot more expensive. It's just not the same thing. Even I will refrain from comparing these two from a device perspective. I may compare them as a mini tablet from that kind of functionality perspective, but I digress. By the way, I almost fell for a trick that, you know, I've, it's like I was so close to buying the blue iPad mini because it looks so good on, you know, on the website. But then I remembered, I fell for that trick before, Apple, not this time. You know, when it comes to Apple colors, it never looks as rich in real life, you know? So I went safe, I went for the starlight. And of course, I think it will go nicely with the iPhone in Desert Titanium which is a little bit of a disappointment when it comes to the color as well. Again, it looked so nice and, you know, darker and more, I don't know, more saturated on the website. But yeah, not this time, Apple. Let's talk about the display on the iPad mini. Now, I'm just looking at the specs and I'm like, I'm very tempted to run here, but I think, I don't know, maybe I should spare you <laughs> until I get the device and actually see in real life how it behaves. But then again, I think, no, it's 2024. And I think out of principle, why are we still getting 60 Hertz on an Apple device? Uh! It's like, call me old fashioned, right? But isn't Apple supposed to be like a premium brand? You know, everyone like looks at Apple and go, oh my God, you know, the gods of technology. Why are we still cutting corners on the display? From a specs perspective, you know, let's do the tech bit real quick here. It's an 8.3 inch liquid retina display with the usual anti-reflective coating. Having experienced true anti-reflective displays recently, you know, I'm struggling to get excited about this phone. It's not that anti-reflective, right? When Apple says coating, whatever, I'm sure it'll be fine outdoors, 
but it's not really anti-reflective that we're now seeing in you know, LG and Samsung devices. Still, I can't help but feel annoyed, to say the least, right? But I don't know, let me know. Am I the only one? Should we not expect 120 Hertz refresh rates on, a, on, a, on an Apple device? I've heard people, even very experienced content creators who've done this for way longer than I have, say that they don't notice it. To that, I say, stop the cap. What? Am I too old, say the cat? How about Skibbity Toilet, Ohio, Res? No, fair enough. Kids is The there. iPad mini now comes with Apple A17 Pro. Like I said, the same chip as the iPhone 15 Pro and Pro Max from last year. But what does that actually mean for the iPad mini? In terms of technology and the chipset, it's actually pretty up to date, right? With it being a three nanometer chip, it's, you know, it's up there with, with what, what's currently out in the market. It's going to run iPad apps really well. It's gonna handle the mighty Apple intelligence just fine. Oh yeah, I am being sarcastic here, but more on that in a bit. But seriously, this chip is going to be great for gaming, photo editing, and all the usual stuff that you do on a, on a mini tablet. I'm really looking forward actually to using Lightroom. Sounds simple and maybe basic, but I love the idea of using the Apple Pencil and Lightroom because I do that a lot in other devices. Now I do that on my S24 Ultra and the S Pen. I do that on my Tab S10, S9 Ultra here. It's just one of my favorite like toilet break activities actually. Too much information. We'll edit this out, yeah? Yeah, cut this out. I've got a whole team here, by the way. It's not just me sitting here at 10 p.m., you know. So that's, that's a whole production here. I do wish we could multitask better on the iPad mini, but let's be real, right? Even, even I have to kind of calm down a bit, Alex, you know? Because if the big boy iPad, the M4 iPad Pro can't get it right, I guess the iPad mini, you know, multitasking is gonna stay on my list, you know, my wish list to Tim Cook. And one day, you know, we might get proper, you know, multi-window support, you know, multiple apps running at the same time, you know, floating windows, you know, who knows? And just to go back a little bit to the Apple Pencil, I'll definitely be pre-ordering the paper-like protector. They're not sponsoring today's video, it's just something that I need because using the Apple Pencil directly on glass, in my experience, you know, it just isn't great. That paper feel for me is gonna be a must. Uh, so stay tuned, maybe for the next video, uh, Paper Like will send me a couple of uh, protections to, to show you. But yeah, we're getting the Apple Pencil Pro support. So all the new gimmicks, I mean, features, <laughs> will work on the Mini 2. The, I've actually got one here. So it's squeezing to change the tools within certain apps. Really cool to do that. And we'll work on the iPad Mini 2, which is, you know, I was actually pleasantly surprised to hear that. So yeah, nice, nice one. The thing is though, you know, do you actually need the Apple Pencil to justify buying the mini? You know, I think that'll be up to what you do with the iPad mini, but personally, I think it's what makes a device really useful, not just the iPad, but any device that has a stylus feature, you know, using it will make that a whole different experience. I just wish more companies would copy Samsung and what they've done since the notes, right? Which is have the pen built into the device. I know it's a hard ask and you know, it would mean the iPad will be thicker and whatever. Or maybe just having a case that really holds it properly. Anyway, it's a shame that the Apple Pencil doesn't come with the iPad, but you know, that's a rant for another video as well. Whenever we talk about the iPad though, we've got to talk about iPad OS. And I'll keep this very short and directly to the point here. The main features it will care about are split view and maybe stage manager. You know, they're not moving the camera, so they're not doing anything crazy to center stage either. But let's be honest, right? On such a small screen, it's not exactly a productivity machine. We've got to be honest to ourselves here, right? When you get the mini, you're not doing a lot of work on it. All the gripes I have about the iPad OS apply more to the bigger, you know, iPad Pro, maybe even the bigger iPad Air. And I've covered that a lot in my previous video, so I'll leave a link here for you anyway. A big part of Apple's software though, you know, the pitch for every single device this year seems to be Apple intelligence. I don't know, can you imagine just like, based on what we've seen so far and how limiting it seems to be, just imagine working in Apple's marketing department right now. I wouldn't like to be there, right? They must be so fed up with it. Like, let's stop talking about AI or Apple intelligence. But let me just say, I think we do need to lower our expectations a little bit. As I mentioned earlier, Apple is very behind on this and the competition is just fast, right? The, the AI stuff in general is moving way faster than any tech I've seen before, you know, and it really baffles me that Apple are seemingly so behind on this, they're not leading on this, at least not in things that we customers can see. 
they've been using machine learning and AI in many different ways, right? But kind of neglected, I think, this consumer wave of AI tech that, that we've seen in the last couple of years. I've been using the beta version, though, of Apple Intelligence, and it's not that impressive. It's doing pretty much what everyone else has done for the last year and a half, two years. The UI, I've got to give this to Apple, looks great, you know, as is often the case with Apple, but the usability isn't there. It's just meh, you know. It's going to take some time by Apple's own admission that to reach a point where it's actually useful. Now, when it comes to the price, the Mini starts at the same $500 or £500 here in the UK, and that's before you throw in the Apple Pencil, keyboard cover, or any other Apple accessories that you're strongly encouraged to buy, you know, Apple make sure that they're going to push you that to, to buy those things. Be careful with storage options though. You know, that's the only thing that would say, you know, it can easily push the price close to the iPad Air or even the M2 iPad Pro. External storage might be something to consider. I always recommend it because it's what I buy myself and you know, I'm not made of money and there are decent alternatives out there. Sure, you know, having internal storage on any device is always going to be more convenient. And if you're staying with it for a long time, maybe it's worth it for you, but it does come at a very high price. Final question is, is the iPad mini worth it? You know, 500 pounds, $500. If you want a super portable and now much more powerful mini tablet, and you know, you want to stick with Apple, yes, it's a solid buy. It will last a long time. And judging by your comments in my previous posts, a lot of you are excited for it. Let me know in the comments if you think you're picking up the iPad mini or if you're sticking with something else. See you soon. Yeah, I lost a bet. That's an Apple Watch. I'll explain that in my next one. Cheers. You can have whatever you like.